Hello Internet's Happy People, today I'm reviewing Jam by Ben Yatsi Croshaw. There are several reasons why I picked up Jam. It wasn't written by a writer, it was done by a games reviewer which I thought was interesting. I'll link to his page in the description, but uh, I wouldn't recommend his content unless you're over 18, kids. Two, it's done by Dark Horse. I thought they were doing graphic novels, I know them from the Hellboy comics and one-off like Darkness Falls, but no, this is an actual book book. The reason I'm reviewing Jam is it's short, it's fun, and it's an original idea, and it's the most interesting thing I've read all week, unless you count educational or economic policy as fun or original, in which case, please come and do my research project for me. The other reason I chose to review Jam is it is a joke. It is a book about carnivorous jam. Strawberry flavoured death. But it knows it's a joke. It just wants to say, hey, here are some interesting ideas. You can have a look at those if you like. Or you could just enjoy the dark humour of jam eating your friends and family. So the book is about Brisbane being engulfed by carnivorous jam. The book centres around Travis, a nobody. He's joined by an array of other colourful characters. There's Tim, his best friend, and again, a nobody. A professional musician who isn't very professional or musician-y. There's Angela, a failing student journalist who just will not put her camera away. And there's Don, a game designer, the only realistic one of the bunch who just wants to be rescued. They're also joined intermittently by two military types, X and Y, named for their chromosomes, who are stuck in the centre of the civilian disaster while also being part of what happened originally behind the scenes. The problem with the book is it's a very short and compact book, so I can't really talk about any central themes in too much detail without giving away massive plot points. But in very broad terms, the book just wants to explore the apocalypse. The observation being that every civilization that has ever existed has been obsessed with its death in some way, shape, or form. The modern comparison would be like nerd culture's obsession with zombie apocalypses. I mean, every guy, myself included, has a zombie apocalypse survival plan. But, but we weren't. Jam is something we did not see coming. The jam incident hits at rush hour, when everybody who has a job or a place to be would be in their cars, stuck, waiting for this huge avalanche of jam to just eat them all. The only people that survived are people who were already at work or in bed at the time. So the only people who survived are the people who are unemployed, the people with weird working patterns and the socially inept. Or as Yahtzee himself puts it, the lazy and the hapless will inherit the earth. But in there lies one of the book's central themes. Why are these people still alive? and how are they going to deal with it. So for example, you have a bunch of teenagers and 20-somethings who were obsessed with the zombie apocalypse hiding out in a shopping mall because they'd all been on the forum beforehand typing away and this was their disaster plan. They don't know what they're doing, they're being a cult, ironically. Or there's an office building full of people who are still trying to impose a rigid bureaucratic structure to, to the apocalypse. This theme also gets explored in the main characters. So for example, Dom just wants to get home. He's realistic about it. He's just waiting for the military or for humanitarian aid or whatever to show up so he can go home. Whereas Tim, Tim is having the time of his life. Tim is enacting his zombie survival plan. He wants to rebuild society. He's got plans for agriculture and housing and how he's going to run things and a feudal system. Had to go get tea. Not that I'm claiming it's a masterpiece. Yahtzee has a very unique writing style and sometimes characteristics of people or objects can just appear out of the ether because he didn't explain the situation or the person correctly and now they appear to have characteristics that just aren't them. But then an individual's writing style has never really hindered a book or a story. I mean, J.K. Rowling has like, what, a multi-million pound empire and she can't write for potatoes. But again with his writing style, some plot twists you can see a mile away and you're just waiting for them to happen. But then others I was genuinely taken surprised by. But then again, I'm not sure if that's my own stupidity or an intentional literary device used by him. The book is just well worth a read. I picked up Jam on Amazon for I think about three, four quid. It's a well done narrative with a unique idea and an interesting execution. It tries to explore some interesting ideas about societal norms and values and technology driven weirdness. With, with, with jam. Thank you for listening. I've been Niall. Up late reading, guys. Thanks for having me on. It's been nice to talk to a camera about something vaguely intelligent rather than usual drivel I talk about. Uh, I'm going to include some links to my channel, Yahtzee stuff, and, and, and the book in the description. I don't know if you can see that, but the book is dedicated to Google Street View.